Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking another look at the calibration flower as I'm going to run you through some of the new updates we've got in the calibration software as well as minor changes to the flower and then we'll run through some tips and tricks on how to use the calibration software, I say software, calculator that I've made and then I'll show you a cool little use for these that you can do after you've finished printing and calibrating with them. So the first thing I just want to recap, if you don't know what this is, you haven't seen it before, then you probably want to check out the video, which I'll link below or somewhere in the cards. That's probably a good idea. And you can learn about the calibration flower, as this is called, which is basically for calibrating your printer. And that video explains all the problems that we've had with cubes and things. And this is just a bunch of opportunities for improving things to make them a little bit better. It comes with a calculator. You can buy it on the website, all that kind of stuff. But today, what I want to focus on is some of the upgrades and changes I've done since that video to make it even better than it was before. So the first thing, and maybe the most important, is that we're going to rename it to the cauliflower. <laughs> so obviously, like cauliflower, a bit like cauliflower, a bit like flower, calibration flower, get it? Yeah, cool. It's now called the cauliflower. Now that we've got the really important thing sorted, let's move on to updates to the calculator so you can see some of the changes I've made there, which might be useful for you if you thought that mm, it might not work for you before. Now it probably will. So the first thing is we've added a bunch of, I say we, I've added a bunch of kind of interpretation of results, what they mean and how to implement as a bit of an extra guide just within the calculator to help you get the most out of it. I'm also going to run through some extra stuff at the end of the video just in case you want some more in-depth things. The next thing I've added is down at the bottom of the calculator. I've added a a zone for steps per millimeter or rotation distance. So before it was just calculating the error, which was what we find using the cauliflower, but now it actually does that calibration of the steps per millimeter for you. So you've got those values that you can implement. The next thing I've added in terms of fixing skew is commands specifically for RepRap firmware. So, so before I had some for Marlin and some for Clipper, but now we've got a little RepRap firmware section as well. So you just copy and paste that line after doing obviously the measuring the calibration stuff and then you're good to go for rep wrap firmware one other thing we've changed in the calculator is for the marlin configuration or marlin firmware skew adjustment kind of stuff previously it was a single command that you'd have to make sure is in the firmware with skew correction obviously being enabled but there seemed to be a bug in that calculation somewhere not exactly sure what was causing it it wasn't very big it was only minor but it was preventing some people in some circumstances being able to correct their skew sufficiently so I've changed it over to an alternative skew method and that should help reduce errors as there's less calculation actually going on and it's closer to what the measurements are that you're actually getting off of the print. The second thing about Marlin firmware configuration is that it's nice to do via G-code because recompiling firmware is obviously a bit of a pain, especially with Marlin. So what I've done is implement into the calculator an M852 command, which you can copy and paste into Marlin, send to your printer, whatever and that will configure the SKU in that way. The downside is most printers don't have SKU correction enabled in the firmware. So you can't issue this command because it doesn't understand the command until you've enabled SKU. That's my understanding. So while the M852 command is there, you may not be able to use it without adjusting the firmware anyway, in which case you might as well just implement the SKU results <laughs> directly into the firmware. The next change is a minor thing to the actual STL itself. So on the very outside, there are some chamfers. And for some people, this was causing measurement errors depending on uh, where you measure it. So those are just gonna be changed to a rounded fillet and that should prevent this problem where we've got a slightly sharp corner with a chamfer. You probably don't need to do it again if you've already used this file. But for those that are gonna be getting it from now on, you'll find that it has fillets on the corners instead of chamfers. The next change is not actually specifically to the calculator itself, although it's entirely to the calculator itself. So initially I made it in Microsoft Excel just because it's an application that I've always had, always used, got it for business, all this kind of stuff. So I was kind of a bit closed-minded there with what other people are going to be using. So now I've got a LibreOffice version, which is an open source office suite, specifically the spreadsheet style version. So you don't have to worry about converting it into formats and getting errors and stuff. There's just a open document format for the calculator. One slight correction that I need to make on my original video is that I said you could do iteration specifically with SKU and that doesn't really work with this calculator in its current state. It, it's technically possible, 
knowing the pre-skew and the after skew and you know you'd be able to work it out but for this it's just a single step your before and your after i have found though that you actually don't really need to do any iteration a single run of this calculation should be enough to get you exactly as far as you need to go even if you're quite a long way out to begin with as long as your measurements are reasonably accurate you should be fine one maybe negative thing is in terms of the downloadable kind of set of files that I have online, I'm going to be changing it to just have the calibration, the cauliflower in the files which I'm charging for. Now you'll just be getting this and the calculator. Before I had my bridging and overhang test, I've not really published any documentation on how to use them. I think very few people were actually using them and not really using them very effectively. So I'll move those out of this file set and we'll just focus on this being the cauliflower. I think the value is still there and from everyone that I've talked to that's used this I think they would probably agree so again maybe you can perceive it as a slightly negative thing but at the end of the day they weren't really being used very optimally anyway so that's kind of it for the updates and stuff it does continuously improve this has not just been a single bosh update it's been kind of updating every few weeks or so pretty much since it was created uh, just kind of as I get feedback from users and their specific use cases and so this is where we're at now. I thought it'd be good timing to do an update on all the things that we've improved. Now onto some tips and tricks and how to read the results. So what I want to do is run through how you could use this calculator to do what you need to do and how I've seen some people maybe misinterpret things or just read it slightly differently to what I intended. So these are probably mistakes based on my like written or format or whatever. So I'm just going to kind of run through now. So firstly, the scale, you don't need to change the scale, but if you have a particularly large printer and you really want to do it at a larger scale, you can. It is technically better to do it at a larger scale, but the 100 millimeter size fits pretty much every consumer printer and is pretty much good enough as far as I can see. So I wouldn't worry about changing that. Don't panic that you can't go bigger or smaller or larger or whatever. Generally, stick with 100% unless you really feel that you want something different. In terms of the conditional formatting that I've input, you can see these are all green, which means less than one millimeter of deviation in measurement. This doesn't mean that your printer is really well calibrated and you're good to go. What it means is when you took the measurement with the caliper that my calculator thinks you probably measured the right thing. For example, if the calculator was asking you to do an internal measurement and you did an external one, it would show up in a different color and go, I think you've probably measured the wrong thing. So it's an interpretation of the measuring that you've been doing, not of the quality of the print. In terms of error, you should be able to get within 0.1 or 0.15 millimeters, but this is dependent on your printer. This is kind of the point of doing calibration, right? If you can calibrate to a really precise and accurate final result, then you've got a pretty good printer. If despite your best efforts, it's still not very accurate, that indicates that there's something wrong with the printer. So for example, if you're doing measurements, you've done your before, you've done your after, and the best you can get is still within like 1%, so you're like plus or minus a millimeter, it indicates that maybe your walls are like extra thick. So what this calculator is really doing is not just doing the very outside and very inside, it's kind of trying to work out where the actual nozzle moved, where the middle of one of those lines is. And that's important because it means if your line is extra wide or extra narrow, the middle is still in the same place. One way that the calculator can indicate that to you is what we've called, or what I've called, the inner and outer dimensions or results. So the inner and outer are a representation of the average of your inner results and the average of the outer results, so as long internal dimensions and external dimensions. If your, on average, internal dimensions are too large and your external dimensions are too small, it means your line width is probably a little bit too narrow. Likewise, on the opposite, if your inner dimensions are smaller and your external dimensions are a little bit larger, it probably means that your line width is a little bit too wide. Now, this is not, it's a little bit imprecise and not totally reliable, but it can be a, a kind of handy indicator. Especially at the end, you should find that they are approximately the same, the inner and outer error should be the same, because that's kind of what the calculator is trying to do. It can't make your printer better than it is, but it can make it the best it can be with what it's provided. So instead of your results being all too large or all too small, it just makes sure that that line is in the right place or in as close as possible to the place it's trying to put it. 
So hopefully that makes sense. It's a bit of an interpretation skill to make sure you're understanding the outcome of the results. The other thing I want to mention is skew. So skew is measured in degrees, it's an angle. So one thing that maybe gets missed with angles is they don't change with scale. So for example, what's a good example? I don't know, I don't have one near me. But if you have a, an angle like this on a triangle, for example, and you make that triangle 10 times the size, the angle or skew error is not 10 times larger. That's one of the like special properties of angles versus linear dimensions. The skew will be the same regardless of the size of the print. The thing that can change is if you have a printer that's skewed sort of, so if you can imagine like a square like this being like perpendicular, perfect angles, if it's skewed like this, it kind of becomes a parallelogram. If you're printing in that shape, that also gets skewed in the same way. If you then rotate that shape and printed it in a different way, it would be skewed in a slightly different way. So if you have two shapes that should be perfectly square, printed slightly differently in terms of orientation on the bed, they will represent slightly different skew in slightly different weird ways. For people using Prusa Slicer and Cura, two very common slices actually, it's a slight downside of those slices that they don't have a percentage adjustment for size. So with different materials, you get different amounts of thermal expansion. So it's very used to have, it's very useful to have a percentage adjustment because the amount of shrinkage is related to the size. Hopefully we get those soon, but at the moment they don't have that compensation method available. So you'll need to use steps per millimeter, steps per millimeter in the firmware to get as close as possible. And then you might have to do kind of adjust the size of the part in the slicer. Kind of annoying, but unfortunately that's the workaround for Prusa Slicer or Cura, which don't have percentage compensation. One thing I didn't mention in the previous video as well is that some printers don't really need this calibration. It's not because they're perfect, it's because they have an inbuilt calibration method. There's not many, but one is the Prusa i3 Mark III S plus whatever. This printers that look like this. So while they have that built-in calibration, it can be useful to have a print just to kind of validate that it's done the right thing. So you can still get it, print it and measure it, and then you'll get a result for the skew to check that it is as accurate as you want it to be. But generally for the Prusa Mark III, don't get it in the intention of using this to calibrate, use the inbuilt system. The other printer that it doesn't work particularly well on is the Prusa Mini, strangely because there is no firmware calibration methods for doing skew adjustment on that printer. The only way to adjust skew on the Prusa Mini is to like physically assemble it slightly differently, which is not great. I'd much rather there's a basic skew feature, especially as it's a printer that's like supposedly for like mass manufacture, not quite mass manufacture, but you know what I mean, They're like a print farm printer. But if you can't calibrate it to be the right size and skew, all the parts are gonna be a little bit wonky. So not ideal, but there you go. So of course, once you've printed one of these, maybe you printed one for a few of your different printers, you're gonna have a few cauliflowers sitting around. What do you do with them? Obviously you could throw them out or whatever, but a lot of people are using them as coasters for like mugs of tea, coffee, whatever. And that's a really great use, I think. They seem to be about the right size. They're nice and flat, very easy to use. Lovely tea coasters. So there we go, that's it from me today. Just a few updates on the cauliflower. You can get it in the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da! <laughs>